Welcome boys and girls and parents to the Grace Fellowship Kids eCampus. Join us today for story time as we read Baby to the Rescue. And please share this with your friends so that they can listen too. Baby to the Rescue, based on Exodus chapter 1 verse 15 through chapter 2 verse 10. As Pharaoh rode out in his chariot one day to inspect his two new treasure cities, Pithom and Ramses, he saw something that worried him at first, then made him angry. He had never seen so many Hebrews in all his life. They were in the fields and all around the brick ovens. They were unloading blocks of stone from barges on the river and hauling other blocks into place on the houses and temples they were building. They were everywhere. Worst of all, every one of them looked so strong and healthy. He had thought he would kill them off with hard labor, but now there were more of them than ever. His plan had not worked. Pharaoh decided that if he could not get rid of the Hebrews by working them to death, he would do it some other way. What could be easier than killing their infants as soon as they were born? Can you say infants? Infants is another word for babies. So Pharaoh decreed that every baby boy must be thrown into the Nile River. When the Hebrew fathers and mothers heard the dreadful news, their faces turned pale. At first, they could hardly believe it. No ruler could be so cruel as to order that all baby boys should be murdered like this. But it was true. Soon terror filled the hearts of all as they heard stories about Egyptians taking babies away from their mothers and flinging them into the Nile to drown or be eaten by crocodiles. Imagine how the people must have felt in homes where a baby was on the way or had just arrived. Imagine how the older brothers and sisters must have worried themselves sick to say nothing of the fathers and mothers. This was Israel's darkest hour. They had put up with the long hours of work and the merciless acts of the slave masters, but this cold-blooded killing of their children was too much to bear. It made them want to leave Egypt more than ever. They began to pray for help as they had never prayed before, and they wanted it now. At this very moment, when things seemed as though they could not get worse, God sent a baby to the rescue. It happened this way. One day, a baby boy was born to Amram and Yochebed. These godly Hebrews had a little girl named Miriam and a little boy named Aaron, and they had wanted another little boy so much. But now, oh dear, what if the soldiers should find him? Nobody knows for sure what name the parents gave their new baby. Maybe it was Abraham or Enoch or Joseph. Whatever it was, it became lost. Later on, as we shall see, he was given another name, and this one stuck to him for life. Yochebed was a loving mother, and she made up her mind that the Egyptians would not get her baby, not if she could help it. Somehow or other, she managed to keep him hidden for three months. But it's pretty hard to hide three-month-old babies anywhere. Just think of the noise they make when they cry. One day when Yochebed knew she could not keep her secret any longer, she got a bright idea. She would make a little boat, put the baby in it, and float it near the river bank. Perhaps, who could tell, some kind-hearted Egyptian woman passing by might find it and feel sorry for the poor little thing inside. Yochebed took a desperate chance, but it seemed to be the only way out. It was better than doing nothing. Any moment, someone could burst into the house and snatch away her baby. Jochebed wove a basket with reeds from the river, making it watertight by coating it with tar. Then she fixed a soft little bed inside and tenderly, oh so tenderly, laid her baby in it. She kissed him goodbye, closed the lid, and carried the basket to the river bank. With a breaking heart and tears running down her cheeks, she placed it gently among the marsh plants. Then leaving Miriam to watch what would happen, she went home and asked God to protect her child. Miriam was not alone on the river bank. Angels were there too, watching with her. This was a special baby for whom God had planned a very wonderful future. After a while, who should walk by but Pharaoh's daughter with some of her maids? Suddenly, she caught sight of the strange oblong basket in the rushes and sent one of her maids to carry it to her. Lifting the lid, the princess saw a beautiful baby boy inside, and the poor little thing was crying. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Perhaps she picked him up and loved him. The Bible says she felt sorry for him. 
At least she wasn't cruel and hard-hearted like her father. As her maids crowded around to look at the baby, wondering what to do with him, Miriam came running up. It must have taken a lot of courage for her to speak to the princess, but with her baby brother's life in danger, she was ready to do anything. Please, ma'am, she said, shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Pharaoh's daughter was relieved. This seemed to be a good way out of a very awkward situation. Yes, go, she said. So Miriam ran like the wind to find her mother. Mother, mother, I can hear her gasping as she rushed into the house. Come quickly, come quickly. The princess has found baby brother. How long do you suppose it took Yochebed to get from her house to the river bank? Not very long. She had never run so fast in her life. When she saw the princess and her maids and the baby crying for his dinner, she was so happy she didn't know whether to laugh or to cry. Of course, she tried to keep a straight face so the princess wouldn't think that she was the child's mother. Then the princess spoke to her, and she could hardly believe her ears. Take this baby, she said gently, and nurse him for me, and I will pay you. The way Yogabed took the baby and cuddled it was enough to give her away. But if the princess guessed the truth, she didn't say anything. As she left with her maids for the palace, Yogabed and Miriam hurried happily home. Their hearts were overflowing with thankfulness to God for the way he had saved their precious little boy. It was all too wonderful to believe. Not only did they have their baby back, but no one could ever kill him now. He belonged to the princess, and she was going to pay his own mother to take care of him. She could give him the best food, the best care, and Pharaoh's daughter would pay for it. If the princess had known who this child would be someday and what he would do, would she have saved his life? I don't know. Perhaps she would have. This baby was the very one God had sent to lead his people out of Egypt to freedom. Thank you for watching, Aaron and Elsie, Samora and Ariana, Levi and Sean, Kim and Sophia. Share this with your friends so that they can listen too. Bye bye.